Hello everyone, I'm Sandro Esteves and we are at the Virtual World Conference on Luteinizing Hormone in ART. Today, I'm talking about the Poseidon classification that I believe you have heard about. During my talk, I will explain to you what the Poseidon criteria are. You will learn how to use the Poseidon criteria in clinical practice. And also, I will share with you, with you some opportunities for, of using the Poseidon criteria in research studies. So the group Poseidon, Poseidon is an acronym for patient-oriented strategies encompassing individualized dose site number, was created in 2015 by the initiative of Professor Carlo Alvigi from Italy. So the idea of the group was kind of discuss and elaborate practical solutions about the diagnosis and management of the low prognosis patients undergoing ART. So there's a brief history of the Poseidon group because we started in 2015 and only five, year, uh, five years ago, but we have achieved a lot of things that I want to kind of very briefly um, show you. So uh, the group started with a, a few experts now we have more than 100 members from 17 countries and four continents because our initiative is open. Everyone interested in becoming a member of the Poseidon group can join the group. We have a dedicated website, educational website, which is www.groupposeidon.com. So I invite you to visit our website and consider becoming a member of the Poseidon group. We uh, have made this website available with a lot of things inside the, the website, including, for instance, papers, uh, slide kits. Uh, it's an educational website, which includes the art calculator that a, a predictive model we developed for estimating the number of all sites needed to achieve at least one neuploid blastocyst for transfer in patients undergoing ART. This is like a, a predictive model that you can use in clinical practice. The ART calculator was developed uh, to help clinicians to estimate what could be, let's say, the optimal number of all sites to have at least one neuploid blastocyst because you and me know that have one neuploid blastocyst in theory might allow an implantation rate of about 50 percent across all age groups. So we developed the art calculator, published the paper in Frontiers in Endocrinology, and subsequently we validated the art calculator using data from three different centers in Brazil, uh, Italy, and Turkey. We or able to show that the art calculator is valid, let's say, tool for the clinician to explore because it could provide guidance for you and me to kind of elaborate our treatment strategies for our patients, specifically patients with low prognosis patients, uh, low prognosis in ART. So besides the art calculator, we have um, developed a dedicated research topic this is an open access uh, article collection published in Frontiers in Endocrinology. We have about 17 articles in that uh, collection so far with about 70 authors and a lot of views from across the globe. So you can have access to these articles using the Poseidon website or Frontiers in Endocrinology journal. The articles are free to download. We have um, uh, more than 40 articles published concerning the Poseidon criteria in PubMed by different groups in different uh, journals across the globe. We have been presenting uh, the Poseidon data on meetings, ASHRAE meetings, ASRM and, and, and others. We have been giving lectures across the, the globe. Uh, there are some randomized control trials gone in on on Poseidon criteria registered in clinicaltrials.gov and 
I invite you to join us and become a Poseidon member today. Just visit our website and then you might contribute with us in developing the Poseidon criteria, which essentially is a more detailed stratification of low responder patients to ovarian stimulation. The idea was when we published the, the paper in Fertility Sterility in 2016, was to propose a new criteria and move from the poor ovarian response to the concept of low prognosis. So using the Poseidon criteria, actually, we need to take into account female age, ovarian biomarkers, AMH or AFC, and the number of oocytes retrieved if the patient has had a previous ovarian stimulation cycle using conventional stimulation. So patients are classified according to their prognosis of reproductive success in art based on this criteria, age, ovarian markers that will reflect oocyte number expected in terms of the ovarian markers or actual if you have got the information from the previous cycle. So this is actually the way we classify the patients in four groups. Here uh, there's an illustration for you to easily understand what we are talking about. So in Poseidon we have four groups of low prognosis patients. Groups one and three, they are younger than 35 years old. Groups one, group one uh, reflect, uh, represent patients with adequate ovarian markers, but after conventional ovarian stimulation, they end up having low, less than four oocytes, or suboptimal between four and nine oocytes retrieved. Group three represent patients younger than 35, but in that case, the ovarian markers are already low. So the number of oocytes expected to be retrieved is actually low. So groups one and three. If you go to the other side, then we have groups two and four. They are patients of 35 years old and above. And again, group two represent patients with adequate ovarian markers ending up with poo, meaning less than four, or suboptimal between four and nine, or sites retrieved after conventional ovarian stimulation. And group four are patients, are the older patients with uh, abnormal ovarian markers in which the expected number of oocytes to be retrieved is actually low. So the idea is that although these patients, they have different characteristics, at the end of the day, we will have few embryos generated. And because of that, we will have reduced cumulative live birth rate. Obviously, the younger patients, they have low embryo aneuploidy risk. And in that case, the prognosis is not so, let's say, uh, reserved as patients who are 35 and older because these patients, they have high embryo aneuploidy risk. So we are not putting all patients in the same box. We are, first of all, identifying patients who might have few embryos generated after ovarian stimulation, but inside that big box, we have four boxes, and these boxes are separated by age and by also the situation of patients with unexpected poor or suboptimal site number like groups one and two, and patients with expected low site number in groups three and four. And when we say that these patients have low prognosis, we are talking about cumulative live birth rate per initiated cycle. So one cycle of stimulation, conventional stimulation, these patients will have lower cumulative live birth rates compared to 
non Poseidon patients, patients not fitting the Poseidon criteria. This is basically the, uh, the concept about the Poseidon criteria. Now, I need to move and uh, share with you the real world evidence validating the Poseidon criteria of the low prognosis patients undergoing ART. First of all, we are conducting at the moment a study uh, using real world evidence, including more than 14,000 patients from two different countries. In, uh, in my center, Androfert in Brazil, also Anatolia IVF, Professor Hakan Yaral in Turkey, and uh, in Vietnam, Professor Leng Wong. So we are exploring uh, the Poseidon criteria in multiple angles. And first of all, we were interested to see the prevalence of the Poseidon patients treated in clinical practice. As you can see in our center, 65% of our patients fit into the Poseidon criteria as compared to 40% in Vietnam, 55% in Turkey. And you see that uh, the older the average age of the population you treat, the higher the prevalence of the Poseidon patients. This is important because it's quite uh, significant the number of patients we see fitting to the Poseidon criteria. The second point that when I said before that the low prognosis patients according to the Poseidon criteria, they will have fewer embryos generated. This is true. Uh, in this study, we explored the number of embryos generated after one initiated cycle compare, comparing uh, the Poseidon subgroups and non-Poseidon patients. There, there's significant difference in terms of the embryos obtained in the Poseidon subgroups compared to non-Poseidon patients. And more importantly, when we look at the cumulative live birth rates, Poseidon versus non-Poseidon, we see that the Poseidon groups uh, have significantly lower cumulative live birth rates, again, per initiated cycle, compared to non-Poseidon counterparts. But interestingly, when we look at the different Poseidon groups, we see that the cumulative live birth rates are not equal. They are actually higher in younger patients, groups one and three, compared to older patients, groups two and four. And another important consideration concerning the Poseidon subgroups is that we uh, observe that the number of oocytes retrieved is extremely important because in patients with within same age, for instance, let's now consider group two, and we have group 2A in which patients have got less than oocytes retrieved, and we have group 2B in which patients have between four and nine oocytes retrieved. You see that the cumulative live birth rate is significantly higher for a patient with higher number of oocytes compared to the lower number of oocytes. Uh, if you go for group one, using the same rationale on now patients below 35 years old, we see the same, the same situation. The cumulative live birth rate significantly higher in patients with more oocytes uh, compared uh, with patients with less oocytes stressing the importance of the oocyte number. We have communicated this in several papers that oocyte quantity as well as oocyte quality plays a significant role for the cumulative live birth rate for a Poseidon criteria patient. And this is a, uh, important to, to provide validation of the concept and also the, the criteria itself for the community. This has been done by the Poseidon group and also by independent investigators. There are several papers now published in the literature actually uh, highlighting the clinical utility of the Poseidon criteria. Uh, not only that, but also validating the criteria in terms of the dif different cumulative live birth rates according to the different Poseidon, Poseidon groups and when compared to non-Poseidon patients. <clears throat> So in, in essence, the Poseidon classification is not another poor ovarian responder criteria. We are moving to another direction. 
we are expanding the uh, concept of poor. Now we are able to identify patients with low prognosis in terms of cumulative live birth rate. We can stratify these patients according to different categories. So we need to change the mindset because these could guide us, provide different treatment strategies to help these patients who are not similar. So in addition to have introduced the concept of low prognosis, which combine oocyte quality and quantity for the identification, the stratification of the low prognosis patients, we have introduced two other key elements in the Poseidon concept. One is called follicle to oocyte index that I will explain in a minute. And the other one is actually a marker, an intermediate marker of success in art, which means the number of oocytes needed to obtain at least one euploid blastocyst for transfer in each patient. So let's start with the FOI. FOI means follicle to oocyte index. So basically, we are interested to identify patients in which the antrophollicle count, I mean, was adequate, but at the end of the stimulation, the number of oocytes retrieved was not compatible, consistent with the baseline antrophollicle count. So you can calculate the FOI, which is the ratio between the number of oocytes retrieved and the ovarian reserve in terms of the antrophollicle count. So we arbitrarily consider that a patient with a normal FOI are those with higher than 50%, which means that higher than 50% of the antrophollicle count actually resulted in oocytes. And low FOI patients with equal or below 50%, I mean, patient in which the full potential was not explored by some reason. So in this paper published in Frontiers in Endocrinology, we explored the possible reasons for a low FOI that could be related to, for instance, low gonadotropin starting dose, the presence of genetic polymorphisms affecting the gonadotropins or their receptors, problem with follicular asynchrony, or even technical issues related to the trigger or the oocyte pickup technical aspects. So when you have patient with low FOI, we should look at possible reasons explaining that situation. What we can do in the subsequent cycle to explore the full potential of these patients. Several of these patients will fit as Poseidon's group one and two because they will end up with less than expected number of all sites. And this is a way actually to look at the situation. For instance, in this ongoing study that I uh, mentioned to you before <clears throat> between our center uh, Turkey and Vietnam, we look at FOI according to the Poseidon groups, and here we see very clearly that patients in groups one and two, they have significantly lower average FOI compared to patients of groups three, four, and non-Poseidon patients. So it's consistent with the concept of some ovarian resistance to a stimulation that could occur in patients in groups one and two. And very interestingly, when I look at specifically groups one and two, what's the proportion of patients with low FOI? I mean, FOI below 50%. You can see here that it's 46% in patients of group one and 22% in group two. So these patients have significant, let's say, <clears throat> a number of patients with low FOI. And here we can see that in groups three and four, it's quite low, although we have some. So in the overall population of Poseidon patients, in the data set that, I'm, that we have been examining, we have about 17% of patients with low FOI, which is significant because we could explore 
potential strategies to increase the FOI in these patient categories. We also look at the covariates affecting FOI and we identify that the total gonadotropin dose was significant uh, covariate affecting the FOI. The Poseidon groups, as I, as I showed you before, the patient BMI, the type of female infertility, the type of gonadotropins utilized, and also the trigger type. So it's important because then we can make, let's say, a, a logistic regression analysis looking at the interaction between these variables and exploring uh, what could occur when we change, for instance, the total gonadotropin dose, the gonadotropin utilized, the trigger type, etc., uh, for these Poseidon subgroups, trying to explore different venues uh, for, let's say, treat patients with low FOI. And uh, this has been explored by independent investigators uh, around, around the world in which they have explored interventions to treat the Poseidon patients, not only the patients with low FOI, as I, as I showed you before, groups one and two, but also patients, uh, uh, Poseidon patients, groups three and four, different interventional therapies could actually uh, be available for Poseidon patients. And this has been explored in multiple um, uh, published and ongoing studies. Now I would like to uh, move to my next point, which is to discuss with you how to use the Poseidon criteria in clinical practice and also in research. I will start with the clinic first, and this is very simple. This is the way we use at Androfert at the moment. It's a three-step approach. The first thing we need to do is to classify our patient according to the Poseidon stratification. The second step, I estimate the minimum number of metaphase 2 sites I need, theoretically, to have at least one euploid blastocyst for transfer. And then I will design a patient-oriented strategy to achieve that individualized oocyte number. So very simple, for instance, step number one, you have the ovarian markers. You can use AMH or AFC the way you prefer. In our center, we prefer AFC, but this is, doesn't matter. We have conducting studies showing that the agreement between the AMH and AFC for classifying Poseidon patients are around 80%. So if the ovarian markers are abnormal, according to age, you classify the patient as group three, if below 35, or group four, if 35 or above. If the ovarian markers are normal, then if the patient has had a previous ovarian stimulation, conventional ovarian stimulation, and the number of oocytes was low, I mean, less than four, or suboptimal between four and nine, then according to age, you classify the patient as group one, if below than 35, or group two, if 35 and above. If the patient has no previous ovarian stimulation and the markers are adequate, these are non-Poseidon patients that eventually will be reclassified as groups one or two if after conventional ovarian stimulation, they perform as suboptimal or poor responders. So it's very simple. So for instance, let's consider a case of a patient uh, of 33 years old with a AFC of four and the infertility is a tubal obstruction. This patient has got two previous ovarian stimulations, one with mild protocol uh, in which only two metaphase two oocytes were retrieved, two embryos obtained, transfer no pregnancy, then another protocol uh, increasing the uh, gonadotropin dose, but no eggs retrieved. So, first of all, we need to classify these patients according to the Poseidon stratification. And this patient is clearly group three. So, the ovarian mark, marker is abnormal and the patient is younger than, than 35 years old. So, the second step 
we will estimate the number of metaphase to all sites needed to have at least one euploid blastocyst for transfer. You can do it manually using your own data set or you can use the ART calculator. The ART calculator is a clinical predictive model to estimate the number of metaphase to all sites needed to achieve at least one euploid embryo for transfer in patients undergoing assisted reproductive technology. So the calculator was developed and validated, providing two types of predictions. Pre-treatment, we can estimate the number. And post-treatment, if that number was not achieved, we can uh, provide uh, estimate of the probability of achieving at least one euploid blastocyst with that number of oocytes obtained. So it's a revised estimate. So for instance, the art calculator can be, uh, can be assessed you, uh, through the Poseidon website. And in that particular case, by including the patient age, we can actually uh, adjust for confounders. And we found that in the model, in the development model, the most important covariates affecting the probability of having euploid blastocyst for transfer were actually the number of metaphase to oocytes, the female age, and the type of sperm used for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. In particular, the use of testicular sperm from men with non-obstructive azospermia were actually modulating the effect, uh, the effect of that oocyte number. So the other interesting aspect of the oocyte calculator is that the user can set up the success probability of the estimates. I can set up, for instance, my estimate using 80% success probability, meaning that when the calculator says you need five metaphase to oocytes, this is 80%, uh, in 80% of the cases, having five metaphase to oocytes, I will be able to have at least one euploid blastocyst. So you can actually uh, use different success probabilities and discuss that with, with your patients. And another feature of the ART calculator is that it provides the 95% confidence interval of the estimate. So in the case that we are discussing, this example that I'm sharing with you, it's on average five metaphase to oocytes, but from four to six. So actually, in every single estimate, you'll be able to obtain the average number of metaphase to oocytes needed and also the 95% confidence interval. So what is important to, to make this uh, estimation? We are not proposing that you do PGTA, not at all. This is a predictive model in which it estimates the probability of having one euploid blastocyst for transfer, which we know that can uh, maximize efficiency because having at least one euploid uh, blastocyst in the embryo cohort, it means the implantation rate will be around 50% or above across all age groups. So we can offset at least partially the adverse age-related effect on implantation and pregnancy. So this is the concept of using the number of metaphase to oocytes to kind of predict the probability of having one euploid blastocyst. This is an intermediate marker of success. But with that oocyte number, I can then discuss with my patient patient-oriented strategies to achieve the individualized oocyte number. And there uh, has been a number of articles published recently exploring the possible strategies to overcome infertility for Poseidon groups one, two, three, and four patients. These articles are available in PubMed and also in the uh, article collection in Frontiers in Endocrinology that I mentioned to you at the beginning of my talk. But here, I just want to stress that you can then discuss with your patients the strategy most likely to achieve the individualized oocyte number estimated by the art calculator. 
how you could achieve that goal or how you can get as close as possible to that goal and then provide the patient a increased success rate. So the different options are available. I won't be able to discuss in detail all these options because we won't have time to do that, but in the, um, in the Meet the Expert interactive session, I will be glad to explore some of these possibilities with you. At the end of the day, we are interested in improved patient care. This can contribute to quality management because now we have the different groups of patients and we can apply the intervention and evaluate the results of our interventions and eventually in the clinic uh, adapt, uh, modify the strategies that best fit in that particular Poseidon subgroup to, at the end of the day, reduce time to life birth and prove success. In addition to the clinical practice, and this is the last part of my talk, we can also explore the use of the Poseidon criteria for research. So how can we do that? Well, we can explore Poseidon using clinical interventional trials, randomized controlled trials, pragmatic controlled trials. It can be pilot studies, safety and efficacy trials, can be proof of concept studies. And we can also explore the Poseidon uh, criteria using prospective and retrospective studies. For instance, I uh, showed you the um, real world evidence observational study that we are conducting, validating several aspects of the Poseidon criteria and exploring uh, the FOI, the possible clinical interventions for these particular subgroups of patients. So there are opportunities to explore the Poseidon criteria using the important endpoints. For instance, this is just an example of a study that could be developed using the Poseidon criteria. First of all, you need to identify the frequency of patients fitting the relevant group you are, you are interested in studying. And then you can say, okay, I will compare intervention A with intervention B. So what are the primary and secondary endpoints? It's important to include some of the endpoints proposed by the Poseidon group. For instance, the follicle to wall site index, the number of metaphase to wall sites. Eventually, you can consider using the art calculator to estimate the number of all sites predicted to achieve at least one euploid embryo for transfer. And you can go for the primary endpoints, keeping in mind that when we talk about low prognosis, we are talking about cumulative live birth rate per initiated site. So, I mean, this is just a brief example on the opportunities we have to explore the Poseidon criteria in research to advance our knowledge and to the benefit at the end of the day to our patients. So for the clinicians, what are the advantages for, the, for using the Poseidon criteria? We then can explore diagnosis because we have a more detailed stratification. We can go for counseling because we can estimate the number of all sites needed to achieve at least one euploid blastocyst. Setting patients' expectations, we can then discuss therapeutic alternatives, emphasizing the importance of age and euploid rate because this is related to age, and the number of oocytes retrieved as important factors for art success. And for treatment, for us clinicians, you and me, we can then discuss patient-oriented strategies to achieve the individualized oocyte number. For the patient, well, they will have their expectations shaped about the actual prognosis of success. They can be prepared better emotionally. The calculator also could uh, help the doctor and the patient to discuss the information. This is like open and transparent information about the number of all sites needed to obtain at least one euploid blastocyst and could help the discussion, the mature discussion about the therapeutic alternatives and prepare these patients even financially for the treatment journey. For treatment, the patient treatment a patient-centered treatment plan in which patients will 
have an opinion on what we are proposing to them and see if it fits their expectations. And for researchers, as I said, we can now design studies allowing selection of more homogeneous groups of patients that we could test in interventional trials and we can have the Poseidon metrics that can be used as primary or secondary endpoints in interventional trials. So these metrics are important, as I said, the follicle to oocyte index, the uh, metrics provided by the art calculator, and also the cumulative live birth rates and time to pregnancy are some possibilities for using with uh, the research studies using the Poseidon criteria. Thank you very much for your attention.